Hi guys, welcome back. In this video, we're going to make a start on processing our geometry. Um, but before we do that, what I want to do is just start adding in those layers of noise and randomness that makes that makes these procedural assets so interesting. So obviously we've got a very, very neat, very kind of structured brick pattern there. It'd be nice just to shuffle these points a little bit, just to give us a bit of variety uh, and a bit of visual interest. So let's drop down another wrangle node. Okay. And the way I'm working here, just by putting everything in its own wrangle node, probably kind of maybe suboptimal you could certainly combine all this information into a single wrangle node if you were confident enough to do that however i feel well when learning sort of breaking these into individual tasks is is useful to to really get your head around what's going on so in this attribute wrangle what we're going to do is we're going to add um, a little bit of randomness uh to to the bricks so i'm going to call this one shuffle bricks okay and what we want to do is we want to take each point and then shuffle them backwards and forwards ever so slightly uh, based on a parameter just to give us a little bit of random noise going on on the brick side. So if you're working on sort of an old castle wall or something like that, you know, the, the bricks tend to be slightly different lengths and, and sizes and things. So we can do that at this stage here by just shuffling these points a little bit along the length of this primitive. OK, so um, to do that, what we need to do is we need to create a random number okay so we'll call this rand val all right and this is going to be we're going to use the random expression again gets a lot of use in procedural systems um to use that to drive the uh, the random shuffle all right so i'm going to make use of that random function we're going to pass it a seed value so we get a different result for each point and um, we can use the point number for that all right and then we'll just multiply it by any old random number doesn't matter okay <clears throat> and that will give us a number between zero and one okay so what we want is a value between negative 0.5 and positive 0.5 because we want the random value to go backwards or forwards okay in its current state it'll only move forwards okay so if we subtract 0 0.5 from that all right that'll give us a random range between negative 0.5 and positive 0.5 okay i'm going to enclose this little expression in brackets just so it gets evaluated first and then i'm going to multiply this value by a parameter so i'm going to create a channel expression and we'll call this one i don't know multi for multiply so this will be the strength of that effect okay and then end that statement with a semicolon cool so that's given us that random value all right so the next thing we want to do is process the points so we want to process all of them but we don't want to process the endpoints we don't want to shuffle their position at all we want to keep that quite rigid uh, so we can maintain the, the shape of our wall but anything that's inside of these we want to be able to shuffle sort of forwards and backwards if I just turn on point numbers you can sort of see the direction those points are going to move so we're going to make use of that um, neighbor count function again so we can create a new integer variable and we'll call it n count again and use neighbor count okay index zero and the point that we're interested in is a current point number and we'll end that statement with a semicolon all right so that's going to store the neighbor count in that value so as, as we as a reminder point zero has only got one neighbor whereas point one has got two neighbors okay so we can use that to drive an if statement so we can say if n count is greater than one, so it's got more than one neighbor, then do something. And the something that we want to do is take the position, add to it along the normal value. So at n is our normal, which is this direction, this blue tail here. And then we can multiply that by our random value. So rand val and end with a semicolon there. All right, so that's our little expression. And in order to generate this uh, parameter here, because currently nothing's changed because we're multiplying by zero, um, to generate this multi multiply parameter, we need to click on this little button here, which was create spare parameters. <clears throat> and if we scroll down, you can see now we've got this parameter called multi, 
which is currently set to zero. But when we start driving it up, you can see we get a bit of a shuffle in those bricks just to add a little bit of variation. It's not breaking up our brick pattern too much. I mean, obviously you can go crazy with it and start to really sort of break up the pattern, but it just adds a little bit of variation and, and uh, visual interest there. So just temporarily, I'm gonna leave it at kind of 0.2, seems about right. Um, maybe a bit less. So we've just got a little bit of shuffle on those bricks. All right, so let's get started on making some geometry on these bricks now. So as we've discussed, what we're going to do is we're going to use these individual lines here as the starting point for our brick. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to break apart these primitives into individual primitives. So currently we've got six primitives. If we drop down a convert line node, put the display flag on that. You can see the effect that's that's had you know so now we've got a bunch more primitives all the way up to 52 and we can process these individual primitives to generate the geometry for our brick okay so the way we're going to do that is again make use of something that is sort of fundamental to pre, uh, procedural modeling and that is the the concept of a for each loop all right so what we're going to do is we're going to drop down a for each primitive all right so be careful which one you pick. There are a bunch of uh, for each loops, each with their own kind of uh, functionality, which hopefully we'll get around to like looking at a couple of different types in, during the course of this project. Uh, but in this case, what we want to do is loop through every single primitive. So I'll put that down and I'll make that connection. All right. So now if I put my display flag at the start of the for each loop, you can see we're just working on this primitive okay and that's going to help us as we generate these brick patterns because it will loop through every single primitive from 0 to 52 and perform the same set of actions which will really help us uh, generate that that, um, that brick geometry that we need so I'm just going to give myself a bit more a bit more room um, so anything that goes in this orange section here is going to be executed uh, as part of the uh, for each loop okay so what we want to do is start generating some geometry on this okay so the first thing we are going to do is we're going to drop down a, a line and this is going to define the width of our brick so the thickness of the brick so I'm just going to put my display flag on there I'm going to turn on my grid so I can see what I'm doing and we want this brick to run centered along the x-axis so I'm going to make the changes to this line and center it. Again, we'll use that same trick where we just grab the length, drop it in the origin of X, negate it and divide it by two. Now you can go, there you see we've got it centered about the origin. Now this, this brick is a meter deep. So the length is at one. So that's a meter It's obviously quite a big thick brick. So we'll drop that to something a bit more reasonable, maybe sort of, I don't know, 40 centimeters. That sounds, uh, sounds reasonable, probably a bit big. But again, this is a parameter that we can pass to the user so they can parameter set the parameters as they as they wish. So we'll call this brick depth and give it that yellow color. All right. So what we want to do is we want to take this line and we want to copy it to the points on our for each loop. I'm just going to turn off those point normal so we want to copy this on there so again we can make use of that copy to points node what we want to copy is our depth and then we want to, the points that we're interested in copying are coming into our for each loop all right and then you can see it sort of copied that brick depth onto those points so we'll just shrink that down a little bit and you can see how the brick depth slider is working so with this we have enough information to start creating some geometry. So we're going to stretch a skin across that with the skin node, put the display flag on there. And there we go. We've got our first bit of geometry. Okay. So the next thing we're hoping to do is extrude this upwards. So we'll put a poly extrude node, plug that into the skin. And the height that we want to extrude is the height, obviously, divided by the number of brick rows that we've got. Okay, so that the bricks will kind of 
go up based on the parameters we set all the way up here in our initial starting points. All right, so let us very quickly just put that in. So we can, on the distance, so this is going to be the, the distance that we extrude our brick. If we select it and press Alt E, it's going to bring up a, an expression editor and just gives us a little bit more room to start typing these uh, channel links into. And we want to link the parameters of the wall height so we can say channel line height and then the parameter we're interested in is the distance so that's going to give us a, a reference to the the actual height of the wall and then we want to divide that by the number of rows in our wall okay so if we look here we've got this resample brick row that dictates how many uh, rows of bricks we have so we can again yeah, reference that one directly with channel referencing which is resample brick row and the parameter we're interested in is the actual segments so this value we want to take the the height and divide it by the number of segments which is this parameter and if we hover our mouse over we can see the parameter name is segs so we will put segs and close that expression okay and then we hit apply we've got something like that okay I think it's going in the wrong direction so let's just take a look all right so we've got some geometry working I think the expression needs a bit of a fix so to double check we will just bring that poly extrude node into the end of our for each loop so this will complete the loop now so it'll go around every single brick in the wall okay and there we go we've got sort of i'm going to turn off point numbers and primitive numbers you can see now we've got uh some geometry um stretching across those points and primitives okay so if we just do press w to check the wireframe you can see that it very 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 neatly kind of lines up to uh to the primitive above it okay and in fact, I want it to go the other way because I can see looking at it, it's going down below the origin. So what I'm going to do is just take this expression that we've just written here and put a minus sign in front of it to make it go the other way. And there it sits neatly onto the, the origin. Okay. The other thing I want to do is turn on output back because currently we've got an empty hole at the bottom. So I'll turn on output back and that will close that for us. Okay. And this blue color that you're seeing is, um, it means the faces are inverted, the normals are facing, the, we're kind of seeing through the geometry. So we could just put down a reverse node to fix that. And there you can see we've got our basic brick pattern in place. So with the display flag on the for each node, let's just come and check some of our parameters just to make sure we're working. So we've got our brick depth here. And you can see we can set that to whatever depth we need. Uh, let's have a look at brick spacing. Um, so if we set that, you can see we're generating some interesting brick patterns. Um, let's have a look. Shuffle bricks is a parameter that we can play with. And you can see that noise sort of really adds just a little bit of interest to the pattern, just breaks it up a little bit. Uh, I'm going to set that to zero just so it doesn't throw throw me off a little bit. Also, need to color this yellow because that's a parameter we're going to promote to the digital asset. And let's take a look at our brick row parameter, see if that's working. There we go. You can see that we can add bricks in a, in a kind of procedural way and we maintain that nice brick pattern. Cool. All right. So in the next video, what we're going to do again, we need to start thinking about layering up noise and what I want is a little bit of um, a little bit of position shuffling or position jitter on these bricks as you can see here they're perfectly flat um, and what I'd like to do is add an, another parameter that will randomly push these bricks in and out um, just to give us a bit of um, a bit of interest and a bit of noise going on in that brick pattern so we will do that in the next video so thank you very much